Welcome back. Uh, it has been an exciting day. I received two packages from um, the UK. <laughs> uh, one was my That Pedal Show package, which came with uh, this shirt and two stickers. Um, I just bought the shirt, but they gave me stickers, and I appreciate that. And they gave me a... One of the stickers is right here. Uh, the other one I put right, it's, it was perfect to fit on the board on my, um, workbench here. And then I got this cool, that pedal show, uh, very kind of Warhol-ish, <laughs> uh, postcard. Hello, Sean. Thank you. Cheers. TPS. So that was cool. Um, when I work on guitars, I watch their show and a bunch of other shows, and they just help the time pass, and they keep me entertained with uh, things that I enjoy, so um, I wanted to buy one of their shirts, because I like their shirts, and I like them, and yep. <laughs> the other thing that came in was my package from Tone Rider. So, we had discussed that for the P-Bass, the red P-Bass, this P-Bass, the S101 red P-Bass, um, we had discussed that it had weaker pickups, and then it had full, like, 500k pots, which is not traditionally how they came. Um, so, I bought from Tone Rider Classic P, Vintage Voiced Pickup Set for Precision Basses, directly inspired by instruments from the 50s, Scatterwound for Harmonic Complexity, it says uh, that I should get a reading of 10.6K, a resistance reading. Um, and these are Alnico 5. So, that is these. Now, the other thing that came was pickups for my Jazz Master copy. Um, it is CZN, I think was the... It is CNZ Audio. This is a Jazzmaster copy that I got. Um, and I really like it. I need to snip this string. I went through and redid the strings because when I first bought this guitar years ago, I was still doing the luthier knot on the strings. I no longer do that. I don't find it necessary to do that. Um, there's still one on the on the low E string and that is simply because I didn't have enough uh, winding on there to undo it and do it proper. But we don't do the luthier knot anymore. Uh, this is a great guitar. I really loved having it. It's hung on my wall most of the time. But every time I pick it up, I love it. I've customized it a little bit. Uh, I believe... Let's see, I've definitely put new knobs on it. These cool aqua sparkly knobs. Um, so those are upgrades. I have flats on it. I'm not sure the gauge. They are big and <laughs> chunky. Chunky flats. The nut... I don't know. Probably plastic. It's fine for now. I did sand off the CNZ audio 
logo. It just looked. I. This looks like a cool guitar, and that that logo just looked like trash. I did not like it. Um, I don't know what the distance, the ratio distance is. Um, bridge to trem on a actual jazz master. I know that this is much closer to the bridge than it is on my Jaguar. My Jaguar, there's some more distance. But I don't care about those things. It works. The saddle actually rocks. The bridge, just like it's supposed to. Um, yeah, it's a sweet guitar. It's this cool corally pinkish orange. Um, I've definitely done some fret end work. The action is pretty nice and low. And I think I think I have most definitely, <laughs> I think I've stained the neck a little bit more yellow than it came. Um, yeah, so now these pickups, vintage 90s soap bar, vintage voice, la la la, Vintage voiced soap bar pickup set inspired by P90s from the 1950s scatterwound for harmonic complexity and unrivaled sustain. So uh, this is the neck and it's supposed to be at 7.6k resistance reading. Al Nico 2 bar magnets. This is the bridge supposed to get a 7.9k Al Nico 2 bar magnets. Um, they are cream colored, so they should match up fairly easy. And uh, yeah, because I imagine what's in here is just ceramic, ceramic pickups. Um, and that's all right, but I wanted something more vintage voiced, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna replace these with these and we're gonna do it uh, traditional jazz master style with the correct potentiometers, with the correct capacitors, um, and even a resistor if we need to. So that's this project. <laughs> I don't know which to start on first to be quite honest with you. Oh, and then we also have the Artec um, PJ Alnico 5 pickup set for the pink Fogil um, PJ base that I recently got. I guess since this baby is on the bench, this is what I'll work on first. I'm going to plug it up through the Fender um, Pro Reverb and just get some sounds um, prior to swapping the pickups out and then we'll get some sounds from the new pickups. Okay, I just got some recordings done on the uh, Pro Reverb. So, let's replace these pickups. I was also thinking about changing the strings, but I think for the sake of the pickup comparison, the sound comparison, I'm gonna leave these strings on for now. Okay, I figured before I swap these out, let's get a reading. Uh, I'm currently in the bridge, 
pickup and we're getting a reading of 9.1 oh, it keeps flipping between 9.0 and 9.1 because I can't get these to hold on very tight there we go we'll call it 9 it's holding steady at 9 middle 4.1 so that's both neck what the F? Seven, oh, okay, yeah, 7.5 in the neck, 9 in the bridge. 7.0 neck, 9 in the bridge. So if these are accurate on the box, they're actually going to be a little less. 7.5 in the neck, 9 in the bridge. Okay. We'll see after all is said and done. You know, I have so many little baggies in all my trash because of all these little bits and parts for guitars that if the police ever had to come my, to my house, they would think that I was a little drug dealer or something because of all these little baggies. Now the fun part, getting to do the wiring. For the wiring, I'm actually going to be doing all um, of this cloth, you know, vintage cloth covered wire. And uh, for the tone capacitor, these are all one meg pots. I found this cool capacitor. It said uh, that if, you know, you're using P90s, um, I looked it up that a, uh, a capacitor that was a uh, 0.033 reading um, would be good for P90s, so I got one. And this is a Soviet military style capacitor. And I got it from some company called Axe Grinders Guitar Guitar tone products in Toledo, Ohio. Um, and yeah, this is <laughs> the Soviet style capacitor. It's, uh, it's big, <laughs> but <laughs> all kinds of neat things you can find out there online. Um, You can find all kinds of cool little capacitors and electronics from all over that are very interesting. So, all right, time to get this wired up.
Okay, in the bridge we have an actual reading of 7.74. The bridge, according to the box, says 7.9. There's plus and minus variance, you know, there's tolerances. So that's very close, 7.74. That's almost 7.8. Um, they advertise 7.9. So let's look at the neck position. Neck is 7.3. 7.38. So it's supposed to be 7.6, says 7.38. Middle position is 3.79. Now I could also, you know, there's a lot of reasons why I'm not getting the exact reading it says on the box. One is that you there's always tolerances, no matter what. There's plus or minus variance for tolerances. Two, um, this little cable could be shit. Three, this multimeter is made in China. It's not the best multimeter, but it gets the job done. Uh, for little things like this, it gets the job done. So, it's very close.